Thank you for your interest in our remote ticket entry system. After completing this tutorial, when you are ready to start entering tickets into our portal, you will need to sign a disclaimer. This disclaimer states that you have assumed all responsibility for entering your own tickets and agree to hold Tennessee 811 harmless from and against any damage, loss, or liability arising from any use of the software product. You are encouraged to use the Google Chrome browser. If you have problems entering tickets when using a different browser, our IT staff cannot help with those issues. On our web page is important information on the policies and procedures that our remote users are required to follow. To log into our training portal, the address is https colon forward slash forward slash gctraining.tn811.com forward slash geocall forward slash portal. To assist you with any questions you may have during training or while entering tickets, we have created a live chat button for you to use. Click on live chat and a box will open. Type your name in the box and press the arrow. The help and home button will take you to our website. Sign up is where you will go when you are ready to start entering tickets in the live system. Your sign up information will reflect the excavator information on each ticket that you enter. Once you hit submit, an email will be generated to our office. Your permissions will be enabled and you will receive an email letting you know that you are ready to start entering or updating your tickets. To log into the training portal, your username will be grtrainportal and your password will be test test. This is all in lowercase and there are no spaces in the username or password. When you log into the live portal, your username will be your email address and your password will be created by you. We suggest that your password be at least eight characters combining letters, symbols, and numbers. After logging into the portal, you will be able to find tickets and submit tickets. Under Find Tickets, you will have the capability to search for tickets that you submitted as well as any other tickets that were entered into our system. This search feature includes other remote users, e-tickets, and tickets submitted by our own agents. The most direct route to find a ticket is by the ticket number. If you don't have the ticket number, there are other searches available to use, but you must use a date range. You may do searches for as far back as you need to, but can only do a maximum date range search of 15 calendar days. For it, for it, Next in line is the History button. When you click on this, it will show you if the ticket has been updated or if any actions have been taken on this ticket. The next feature is the Update feature. If you have permission to update your tickets when you press this button, a box will appear. It is very important that you only update your company's tickets. When this box appears, be sure that you type your name in it. If you would not type your name, it will cause the ticket to update incorrectly and result in an invalid ticket. The update ticket feature can only be used on normal tickets. If you need an emergency or a second notice, you would want to call our center for assistance with these types of tickets. The last feature is the copy button. This will copy the ticket that you have open exactly like it is. If you get ticket numbers from another company and want to create the same ticket in your company's name, this is where you would pull up that ticket. When you copy a ticket, be sure to change whatever information necessary to reflect the type of work you are doing and any other information to make the ticket correct for you. Verify that the mapping is correct. You are then ready to hit submit and get a ticket in your name. Now we will look at the submit tickets feature. This is where you will enter your tickets. Each time you log in, your excavator information will pre-populate. If you need to change your contact, Click on Update Information and that will open up the excavator field to allow you to change the contact name and phone number. Remember, it is very important to always have a good contact name and number so that the locators can reach someone if they have questions. After updating your contact information, select Submit. 
This will stay the same name and number until you update this information again. We have added a compass to help you with cardinal directions. It is important to give cardinal directions when entering directions from the intersection to the property or location to mark. The upper right side of the screen is for the work location information. The work location is very important because it identifies the address or location that needs marked. The marks you make on the map with the marking tools will tell us which member utilities are in that area. We will then notify them of your intent to dig and they will go and mark the underground utilities in the area of excavation that is specified in the work location information part of the ticket. The locators do not see our maps. It is very important to have the correct information in the work location fields. The red fields are required fields. Any fields that have an arrow to the right of them will give you choices. We ask that you have your cap lock on and that you separate all thoughts or sentences with three dots. To move from field to field, you may tab or put your cursor in the field that you wish to type in. You are only allowed to enter normal type tickets. If you have an emergency, short notice request, damage, or correction to a ticket, you need to call our center for those types of tickets to be entered. Tickets will become valid in 72 hours, excluding weekends and holidays, from the date and time that you enter the ticket. If you start typing in a field with an arrow, it will jump to that category. Say you are installing a water line. Type in WAT and it jumps to the water types of work. The next field is for who you are doing the work for. If you are doing it for yourself, just tab through this field and it will populate your company name in this field. The extent field was created for use when you are working on a mileage locate. Anything over 2,000 linear feet on the same road is considered a mileage locate. You would put the total distance that you need marked in this field. If you are using explosives or if there is a possibility that you are going to use explosives, you should check the box and put a note in the remarks section of the ticket. If you have marked the location in white, you should check this box. It is also helpful to put a note in remarks if you have it marked in white. If you haven't marked it in white but plan on doing so, do not check the box but put a note in remarks that you will mark it in white. If you are doing directional boring, you should check the box. If there is more than one address or lot number to mark at, you should check the additional addresses in remarks box. The additional addresses or lot numbers should be listed at the beginning of the remarks section of the ticket. The valid date and time, update date, and expiration date are located on the next line. These times cannot be adjusted on remote entered tickets. The time on the ticket is central time. Only normal tickets are allowed to be entered remotely. If you have any special requests, please call our center for assistance. In this portal, we will only enter tickets in the state of Tennessee. The county field is for the county in which the location is located. You will notice there is a drop down arrow next to this field. If you expand this, it will show you all 95 counties in Tennessee. A county must be selected before the map search will begin. After you have selected the county, tab over to place. The place is for the city of the location to mark. The cities in that county will populate after you have selected the county. You can choose a city from this drop down or type in the city name if it isn't on our list. A ticket cannot be sent through with rural as a place. Address is for the location of the area to mark. The first box after address is for the 911 address. The second field is for any prefix to the street name. The third field is for the actual street name. The fourth field is for the type of street you are working on. The fifth field is for the road suffix. The intersection field is for the street that is physically closest to the dig street by the location to mark. This is important information and very helpful for the locators. As soon as you tab past this button, the map will automatically begin searching for the street you have entered in the address field. Under intersection is the directions field. This field is where you are required to put distance and direction from an intersection located on our map to the location or property to mark. Even if you do have a 911 address, you need to be very specific on where the property is. If the dig street isn't on our map, you would still use that in the address field. Then in directions, you will provide the directions to that property from an intersection that is on our map. 
Also, if you use GPS coordinates, latitude and longitude, to help find your location, these should be entered in directions. The field to the right of the directions is the remarks field. This field is for marking instructions and any other helpful and useful information for the locators, such as lot numbers, subdivision names, apartment complexes, anything helpful for the locators to find the location easier. After completing the work location information, you are ready to begin the mapping process. Map tools are located just below the work site information. The Zoom 2 has a drop down arrow. If you choose full extent, it will show you the entire state of Tennessee. The selected will zoom you to the area that you have marked on the map, and the XY selection is for GPS coordinates that you may want to enter. The clear button will remove any marks you have made on the map. The pan button will allow you to move the map around. The marking tools are mark radius, mark point, mark line, and mark area. The Mark Radius tool will be used to mark a radius of an intersection or if you are working at a location off the road and need a large radius of a specific point marked, you could use this tool. When you choose Mark Radius, you would then left click with the mouse where you want to put the radius. A box will pop up, then select feet, meters, or miles and enter the distance. Remember, the maximum you may mark of an intersection is up to 500 feet. The mark point would be used for specific areas or 911 addresses. After selecting mark point, put your cursor where you want to mark and left click. The map will be marked at that point. The mark line will be used for any distance along a road such as mileage locates. Simply put your cursor where you want to begin marking and left click. Drag your mouse in the direction you wish to measure and double click to release. As you are marking, a box will appear that has the total distance of the measurement in it. The mark area will be used for any large areas to mark or large properties. Any property or location that is over 300 foot in road frontage or depth should be marked with this tool. Use Selection will mark the area that you have highlighted under the search section or an intersection that has been found and marked with an X. You need to be careful with this tool and make sure that you are marking the area that you want to have marked. If you are working at an intersection and you have that highlighted on the map with an X, you can convert that X into a mark by using the Use Selection tool. If the road intersects in more than one location, this tool will not convert the selection because you may only have one mark per ticket. The Measure tool will allow you to measure distances from the intersection to the location before marking the map. Put your cursor where you wish to begin measuring, left click and drag your mouse. Double click to release. When measuring, left click to change the direction and continue measuring along the road. The blue numbers on the top line inside this box are the segment of your measurement and the black numbers on the bottom line reflect the total distance you have measured. The binocular tool next to use ticket will pull the information down from the address field and start the search again. The binocular tool located to the right of this with the empty box will allow you to do searches on streets that you do not have in the address field. On the bottom left corner of the map is Layers button. When you expand this arrow, the default is Map. You can turn on Orthos. This will give you an aerial view of the area. I encourage you to use this button often. Select Grids to see what grid the area is in. More than likely, you will not need to use this. Select alternate street names to have the streets labeled if they are known as more than one name. If a road has more than one name, it will be shown on the map. When you use all marking tools, the map will show the actual mark as well as a 300 foot buffer around the marking tool that you used. Try to ignore the buffer and remember to mark the map according to the directions that you have on the ticket. When marking along a street or interstate, it is a good habit to remeasure the area that you have marked to make sure it is an accurate mark. The most important thing to remember when entering tickets is that this is a legal document you are completing and it is very important that all information is entered accurately and the map marked correctly. This ensures that the correct utilities are notified and no one gets hurt while digging. Once you are finished entering all information and mapping the location to mark, please hit the submit button. Your ticket number will pop up along with the list of member utilities that we will notify. Thank you for your interest in our remote ticket entry program.